Hey, this is the Earl here, and this is my Campanatus colony that I've been working on for a while. Got them in Austin, Texas, and been working on them for a couple years now, but they had a pretty rough start getting them going. We'll zoom in on the queen here. She's uh, living here in her test tube when I first got her going. I started off with three of these queens, and all three of them exhibited the same behavior. They decided to spread the eggs all over the inside of the tube rather than collecting them together and tending to them. Uh, so what I decided trying to do was instead of... Uh, keeping them in the tube was to try and go for a tub and tube setup because usually the queens will take all the eggs, move them to the optimal position within the test tube, and do pretty good. But what it had with uh, the all three of the queens, they just kind of scattered their eggs all about the test tube and they weren't tending to them. So I figured uh, once we get them inside the tub and tube setup, just with some natural substrate, that that might be a better setup for them. Um, so here we go, setting the queen inside and just kind of letting her uh, see if this would work better because I lost two of the queens initially uh, just because they would not drink, they wouldn't eat, wouldn't do anything, and weren't doing so well. And this was my last one, so I figured I would give this a shot. I uh, put her in here, and you can see those eggs are just kind of just scattered about all over the bottom of the tube there. Um, but I set her in there. She got pretty upset from the light. I uh, had been keeping her inside of a dark drawer for uh, pretty much the past three months leading up to this. And anyways, uh, within about an hour of setting her inside the tube, she had moved all the eggs down into the dirt uh, and moved everything underground and went good from there. So we fast forward uh, about a year now and you can see that she's got a whole lot of brood tending to her and taking care of her living inside of a little tube here that we'll get into a little bit more later on. But this is in their secondary enclosure that I put together for them and we're going to go into the build process of that now. So what we wound up using was some Play-Doh because that was all I had on hand and we're going to build a nest for them. I set this up, got a piece of glass, kind of sketched it out on some paper, and then started uh, uh, just kind of laying everything out and figuring out how it was going to go. I'll go ahead and just kind of put this together, and you can just watch what's happening. Laid down a piece of tape there so it wouldn't shift around very much, but we just start following the lines on the piece of paper of where it was, making little tunnels of where the larger sections will join, and just kind of start building it up, make some large uh, sitting areas, uh, little passageways in between them, and just kind of go to town, but just uh, cue some music and we'll just watch this unfold. non-sanded grout. Black is the color choice here because I want it to be nice and dark on the background. And then a sand for the filling mixture that we're going to be mixing in with the sanded grout that goes in with it too. Grabbed a couple of mixing tubs. 
then water in a small dish to mix it all together. Then for the, uh, just jumping right into it, we're gonna take the uh, avocado spray, just spray it all across the bottom. I prefer to use the spray over anything else because it just, uh, getting a tub and mixing in with the brush takes a lot longer. Just spray it in there, just coat the entire surface really quick and easy. Also fills in the gaps in the product later on uh, when you need that separator point between the grout and the items that you don't want to stick to it. So I grab my little uh, Play-Doh nest and throw it in there and spray it down with a liberal amount of the avocado spray and then go back in with that paintbrush and coat it really well. One more point on the build materials here is I'm using a corrugated poster board that you can just get at any of your hobby shops and then use blue planters tape to seal all the seams along the edges of it and this will be watertight especially with the oil in there and not let any of the liquid from the grout mixture seep out into uh, onto the table below. Then you can see right here I decided to make a little modification last minute, chop out a little section and just uh, very easily change the design just slightly at the very end there. I wanted to separate this one little section out for the watering chamber. Uh, it didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to in the end uh, because there was too big of a gap between the wall and the other chamber so the ants could just pass right through it. But uh, anyway, uh, this is how I... Um, can modify it later on and make it work better in a future iteration but uh, we've got the water tube coming down from the top stick a little bit of play-doh on the top and then jam it down into the play-doh at the bottom and you've got a nice little passageway through for the water to come in to hydrate the nest uh, without having to um, drill holes anywhere else and then it's a hole small enough that the ants can't escape out through it for the size of ants and then we do the same kind of technique here with the tube that I want passing out the back of the enclosure and this one actually goes all the way out the top so I didn't need to stick any play-doh on the top end of that one uh, sprinkle some sand to give texture on the inside of it as well uh, that goes right into the oil mixture a lot of this is going to fall off once the uh, um, once the final form comes out of the mold uh, but this also adds in um, a little bit more depth and keeps the grout from going all the way up to the glass and that's uh, one, of the, one of the big parts there so that uh, it's not technically completely sealed. Uh, you have a little bit of a gap about a maybe an eighth of an inch thick that the ants can still kind of squeeze through in various sections because of that sand. And like I said, most of the sand falls off once the, uh, once the mixture comes apart. Alrighty, let's get into the mixture now. So we take some of our plaster and then the sanded grout, which uh, sanded grout you mix with sand uh, to make the mixture, but we're going to do something kind of special with that up front. So we take uh, one spoonful of the plaster and mix it to two spoonfuls of the uh, sanded grout. And so on this here, uh, you just kind of eyeball it to get to the appropriate thickness and for the first layer I want it to be extremely uh, liquidy because I'm not actually mixing any sand into this first layer. Uh, I'm using the sand that I sprinkled down initially to act as the, the bonding for the sanded grout. Uh, and so stir it up here a little bit. Uh, it's a little too liquidy at this point so we're going to add in a little bit more of the uh, plaster and the grout in a second and get that mixed in pretty well but stir it up get all the chunks broken down and um, we'll mix some more of that mixture in one part plaster two parts of the sanded grout and hit, get it mixed in it's starting to look pretty good um, we, and again for this first layer you want it extremely liquidy once we start moving into the follow-up layers you start mixing it a lot thicker and use um, uh, the actual ratios that you would off of the packaging for the grout 
but that first layer being extremely liquidy helps it bond into that sand that's already there so that it doesn't flake off as much, but you still do want a lot of that sand to flake off on the front side. Now when you pour as well, you want to kind of try and just let the liquid seep into all the different spots and trying to keep it a s nice, slow, smooth pour and, uh, and then it'll just kind of start seeping down into the different areas. Now you see it just barely covers the surface here, but we're going to do a ton more batches and just slowly start picking it up and getting it going because if you just do all of it all at once you need really big mixing tubs to do it and then the layered approach also helps eliminate bubbles as well if you continually slowly pour in small layers uh, the bubbles have a chance to escape faster because when you stir it up you get a lot of bubbles in there and then you just do a small narrow stream and you're good to go uh, we'll go back to the uh, music here and just watch this go by in time lapse because there's a lot to, lot of pouring that's going to happen. So we're on to the final portion here of actually moving the ants into the nest. Uh, what I wound up doing was slowly drip, dripping water into the nest with a eyedropper until the ants started coming up to the surface with the brood. And when that happened, I put a tube in to the nest to get them to uh, start going down the tube and into the uh, to the, the the final living quarter and hopefully get them moved in and take a look at how it's going. Uh, just leave you with some shots of the ants moving in, and uh, we'll we'll just leave it from there. <laughs> 